welcome to the Fit Marriage Show, the number one straight talk fitness show for busy folks. I'm Dustin Reekman, and today I have the pleasure of bringing you Greg Justice. That was really a great pleasure to be able to interview Greg and bring all this content to you. Greg has trained over 45,000 people in his career. Um, obviously, he's been a very successful personal trainer. Uh, his, his gym in the Kansas City area is getting ready to celebrate their 25th anniversary, which we'll talk in a little more detail about in the interview. But the thing I really focused on in this interview with Greg is his expertise in corporate wellness. And so we'll explain in the interview what that actually means. But effectively, it's, it's a great way to find balance between work and fitness, which I know a lot of us struggle with. Um, sometimes in the corporate setting, which has been Greg's sort of focus uh, throughout his career, but also we talk a lot about how to do this even if you're self-employed, if you're a stay-at-home parent, if you have some more unconventional hours in the workplace. And I think that there's something in this interview that all of us can really take away um, get fired up and, and make fitness a part of our busy lives, even if, like most of us, we have a job to attend to and, uh, and a busy career. So without further ado, let's jump right in with Greg Justice. Welcome once again. Very excited today to speak with Greg Justice, a uh, personal trainer based in Kansas City, but as, as we'll hear, uh, has influence all over the world in a lot of different ways. Uh, Greg, thank you so much for being on, and to kick off the uh, program today, if you'd just like to give us a little bit of your background and introduce yourselves to the Fit Marriage audience. Dustin, it's a pleasure to be here with you today. Uh, my name is Greg Justice, and uh, I opened AYC Health and Fitness 25 years ago, uh, actually in May of 1986, fresh out of, fresh out of graduate school with no job, no money, and, and blinders on because it was my singular focus uh, to own and operate my own personal training business. And here, as I said, almost 25 years later, uh, I'm pretty uh, content with the way things have turned out. Fantastic. That's, that's great. Um, and we'll talk a lot about your specialties, particularly about corporate wellness, I think, sure. will, be, will be something that's of great interest to a lot of our viewers. Um, I guess to kind of put things in perspective as well, do you want to share a little bit about you know, the personal side and, and your marriage and family and, and what you got going on there? Sure. I married uh, Dana Tebow was her name, and we got married in 1985, and we'll celebrate our 26th anniversary this June. Uh, I have three kids, David, who uh, will graduate from the University of Kansas School of Business in about two months, and uh, a 19-year-old son named Cale, and then my daughter, Mia, is 11 years old and in fifth grade, so I've got them scattered from uh, young to uh, almost graduating from college. Well, that's awesome. And if you do the math, it sounds like uh, not too long, I guess, be I guess you got married just before you really started your first gym, and I guess yes. uh, your, your wife has grown with you through all these experiences over the last 25, now 26 years. Right. And, and interestingly, right in the beginning, uh, I was managing a fitness center uh, at the time we got married, which was in June of 1985. Uh, about three months after, uh, about four months after we got married, uh, the gym that I was working uh, at uh, was bought by somebody new. And the first order of business was for them to clean house, basically let go the entire management team of which I was managing the facility at the time. And so I was uh, uh, just married and lost my job. Wow. And, uh, uh, and you know, at the time it was devastating. I can remember driving my little 1985 Ford Escort to pick up my wife because we only had one car at the time. I uh, picked her up from work and had to tell her that I had just lost my job and it was a devastating time. But, uh, you know, looking back, it was absolutely the best thing that could have happened. I'm a man of faith and, and believe that things happen for a reason. And, uh, I, I, you know, the very next day after sleeping on it overnight and being devastated, the very next day I made a call to my uh, graduate professor back in uh, Kentucky. I was living in Kansas City at the time and asked him if an opportunity might come about for the next semester so that I could complete my master's degree. And he said, you, you cannot believe this. Just the day before his graduate assistant had taken another position at another university. <laughs> <laughs> and so, I mean, immediately he offered me the position. I immediately accepted it. And uh, again, you know, uh, thank the good Lord uh, for his blessings and, and, you know, the rest is history. Absolutely. Well, that's a great story. 
Um, well, let's, I guess let's, we can jump right into the, the meat of the content today, which sure. we're going to focus a lot on corporate wellness. Um, obviously the, the whole idea here and with fit marriage is, you know, fitness for busy couples. Mm-hmm. We understand the constraints that we all face and, but still making that a part of our life and all the reasons that we want to do that. And something right. that we haven't had the chance to talk a lot about is more of the, you know, we've, these like a on the corporate side, you know, traditional mm-hmm. nine to five, um, or, or plus as far as the hours go, mm-hmm. um, you know, the, the stresses and the pressures and the time constraints and a lot of times the financial constraints that come with that. And how do we overcome it? And you're right. you're a, a foremost expert in corporate wellness. You've trained people throughout the world, which we'll talk mm-hmm. about you know later in the interview, um, on how to how to conduct these programs. So can you just kind of give us the you know the the two minute overview of what is corporate wellness, um, and and why companies are generally interested in it? Well, for a lot of years, uh, and, and my experience in corporate wellness goes back 25 years, uh, and so I, I've been involved in the industry for a long time. One of my biggest frustrations with corporate wellness as a whole is that it is a, or, or in the past at least, and even to a certain extent today, it is an industry of talk yeah. <laughs> and very little action. It's, you know, it's like, we, we need to do this, we're going to do this, we'll have a committee meeting about this, and we'll talk about this, and our corporate wellness program will consist of a quarterly newsletter <laughs> that talks about health and fitness and maybe has a recipe on it, and that's our corporate wellness program. That's, that, unfortunately, is still... Uh, pretty common today with a lot of corporations. Now, yeah. I think with all the uh, healthcare initiatives that are going on in Washington and the legislation that is coming down over the next three or four years, companies are now seeing more and more the importance of having a workforce that is well. Yeah. Because when they are well, they are more engaged and they are more productive. And so consequently, they're more efficient with everything they do. And so companies are starting to finally come around. And again, I've seen this very slow evolution over the 25 years yeah. that I've been in the industry uh, to more of a, an industry of action rather than talk. And uh, so there are positive things coming down the line. Um, and I hope that uh, my program is a, a part of that as well because we are an action-oriented program. Yeah. And the so first thing that we do – yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I was just going to say, so that kind of sets the stage into – you know, sort of how we've how we've evolved and are probably going to continue to evolve to where the focus on wellness in the workplace is is only going to increase. Um, right. And I think that that's good for everybody. I guess to to take a little step back, you know, when, when I hear corporate wellness, I have a pretty good idea what that means because I've been in corporate America, um, dealt with you know those kind of programs before. For someone who's who's not real sure, I mean, does, effectively is this bringing uh, workouts, nutrition? Is it become you know integrated into the workday or, or what does or, and maybe it's a range of things but what does corporate wellness actually mean other than if you get into the action side of it you know what are the what are the good things there that the people can be doing if they have a corporate wellness program well the thing is corporate wellness is a such a broad term yeah. that it does cover a lot and unfortunately for a lot of years who was running the corporate wellness industry were the pharmaceutical in- companies uh, the insurance companies and consequently, they got to basically define what wellness or corporate wellness was. And believe me, it is not what you and I would define wellness as. Yeah. You know, there, yeah. there's a difference between disease management and then being a being proactive in managing your own health through yeah. regular exercise and proper nutrition. Bingo. Yeah. And too, and too many people will choose the route of uh, the disease management. Okay, if they've got type 2 diabetes, what's the first thing they'll want to do is automatically go on the medication to regulate rather than the doctor telling them we can control this with regular exercise and proper nutrition. Yeah. No, no, no. Give me the medicine. It's a whole lot easier. That, unfortunately, is the mindset with a lot of individuals. Okay. And we, when I say we, you know, folks like you and I are out there saying, you know, screaming, no, that's not the way to do that. Right. Here's the right way. And so we're bringing our version of corporate wellness, which is practicing and preaching regular exercise and proper nutrition as the two most fundamental components of what wellness is, not taking a pill to regulate uh, you know, type 2 diabetes. Now, don't get me wrong. I know there is a need for disease management. Sure. Yeah. Type 1 di- you know, good example, type 1 diabetes versus type 2 diabetes. Yeah. So, you know, there is a need for it. So I'm not I'm certainly not bashing that. But what I am bashing is that when, 
you know, a pharmaceutical company or insurance companies will focus on making that the focus rather than, you know, the living the healthy, the well lifestyle that you and I know yeah. is the correct way to do it. So our program takes in uh, to a corporation because we know that if we just offer gym memberships or discounts to the uh, corporations, the ones that are going to take advantage of that are the ones that are going to join the gym anyway. <laughs> right, right. Yep. You know? So our job in corporate wellness is to engage those that otherwise would never consider doing it. Okay. By taking the program on site, we take away a lot of the intimidation because a lot of folks are just quite frankly afraid to walk into a gym. They're intimidated by it. So by taking the programming to them, having specialty classes, small groups where you become accountable not only to yourself but to those you know, five or ten individuals in your group. Um, you see a lot of churches doing that these days yeah, where yeah. you know these big churches of 500 or 1,000 members, they break into what are called small groups and they become accountable to each other. And the same thing, you know, we take that concept into the corporate setting of developing and building these small groups and having activities based around wellness, a well lifestyle uh, to these small groups, whether they be yoga classes, Pilates classes, boot camp classes, uh, lunch and learns, you know, uh, yeah. nutrition type programs. And I don't care what nutrition program individuals do. Most of them will work, even the crazy ones. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, they, they will work. So yeah. Uh, the key is to find something that you can do or that you're willing to do, that you're comfortable doing for a lifetime because our motto is that fitness and wellness is a journey, not a destination. Like you that. know, That's why I'm not a big fan of just those 12-week uh, body transformation contests because once you get to that 12 weeks, that's just the beginning. Yep. And too many people in their mind put that as the end game. Yep. And that's just the beginning. No, absolutely. So, yeah, our, uh, our yeah. tagline is fit together for life. And, mm -hmm. um, and it's really for that reason. I think we've all been through those, those roller coasters of having, right. you know, three months maybe where you're really devoted and you're feeling great. And mm -hmm. it's so easy if, if that's your, your focus is that in, in number, like you said, right. then you, you just drop back off and, and you're, exactly. you typically yo-yo up worse than you ever were when you started. Um, <laughs> exactly right. So you, you talked about, it sounds like there's just a wide variety of, of different things that could be done as part of this program or a program like this you mentioned you know yoga pilates i'm assuming if there's the right facilities you can do weight training uh you know body weight exercises you know more high intensity interval training uh, yeah i'm sure the the uh the types of things you can do in corporate wellness are as wide as you can do at a typical gym you know as long as you can accomplish it within a small group so what sort of i i guess i'm what I'd like to help people through is how does this, how would this work? It, it, let's just use the example of what you prefer. So what you think is the best way for, for a, a general small group in a, in a medium sized company. I mean, is it like from a 10 to 11, 10 to ten forty five, or, you know, however long it takes the company allows their employees in a given small group to just go at that time and work with you or a different trainer on site. Um, and you've got a program for them and they hit, they hit that three days a week or you see what I'm saying? Just a yeah. kind of a typical week of what a corporate wellness program might look like uh, in a, in a well run program. Right. Well, I can tell you that there is no typical because okay. every situation is completely different. In fact, uh, I, it's a constant evolutionary educational process for me. And I've been in the industry for 25 years. Things will come along, uh, come down the line or down the pipe that I thought would have never worked that suddenly are some of our most popular offerings. Really? Okay. For many, yeah, for many years, Fridays were a death sentence in corporate wellness. Yeah. Anytime we would try to do workout programs, it would just be a miserable failure. So recently, one of our, uh, one of our best contracts that we've had for eight or ten years in the corporate uh, market came to me and said, we would like to add some Friday programming. And I said, oh, okay, well, you know, here's the history of Friday programming. He says, well, let's just give it a try. Let's just give it a try. So it's like, okay, we have a program that we call Freestyle Fridays at okay. this corporation's now. We started it about a year and a half ago. It has suddenly become the absolute most popular program that that corporation has ever done. And we are at that corporation five days a week. We run 20 individual classes at that one corporation 
every single week. Oh, my gosh. Wow. And those Freestyle Friday workouts, of which we have four now, at 11, 11.30, 12, and 12.30, every one of them is packed full. And, again, going strong after you know, a full year and a half. Now, and that's a, a great example of a company that is absolutely committed to their employees and giving them what is working for them. And it's a computer software company. Uh, they do legal software for bankruptcies. In fact, they're either the world's leading or second largest uh, processor of bankruptcies in the entire world. Gotcha. And they are absolutely committed to having a well workforce. <laughs> And uh, they've been clients for many years, and their program is only getting stronger year after year because of the dedication of the management and uh, the camaraderie that we've built in those groups over the, the course of the many years we've yeah. been there. That's fantastic. I mean, 20, mm -hmm. 20 different sessions throughout the week. Yeah, so, that's just one company. <laughs> so what is, and, and maybe by its name, it's, it could be anything, but what, is a, what would be like a Freestyle Friday workout? What are people experiencing in that that they like so much? Well, our programs, a lot of our programs are the high-intensity interval training yeah. programs, and that scares a lot of people. So we kind of have to put a little buffer on that <laughs> and explain to them that high-intensity is relative. Right. What right. high-intensity is to you and I is different than for that you know, relatively sedentary person that sits behind a desk 40 hours a week. So sure. it's all relative, and we have to educate them through that process. And we, we do, a, I think, a pretty good job at the beginning of educating them on what that means to them. Um, but our programs are all 30 minutes long, and that's, that's critical. Uh, and science backs us up, too, that you can get uh, an incredible workout, in fact, and a very efficient workout in that time frame if it's structured properly. Yep. Um, and the key in that is in the corporate setting, you've got to get in, you've got to get out, and you've got to get those employees back to their productive day. Yep. So that's the key with those 30-minute programs is uh, being efficient with it. That's great, and that's mm -hmm. yeah, that's one of the philosophies we stick to here is mm -hmm. you know, 20 to 30 minutes, right. a lot of full body and a lot of high-intensity interval training. You can accomplish so much, right. um, and obviously within the corporate setting, um, and if you're not in a corporate setting, you have a lot of the same constraints. Right. Um, and, that, and while we're talking about constraints, what are... I'm going to set you up with the softball here, but really, you know, what are the typical constraints that, that keep people from doing, being well and, and working mm -hmm. out and, and eating well? And then how does corporate wellness, uh, I guess, overcome those, those concerns okay. for people? Well, I think that there, there's probably a parallel between the general population and the corporate population, but we do a lot of research with all of our companies and we want to understand them as a workforce. We want to know what are the reasons they don't work out. Yeah. And so through all the research that we have done, the three most common uh, excuses, for lack of a better word, yeah. are time, location, or convenience, and money. Those okay. are your three most common objections. Now, time, the time one is always number one. And then, depending on the company, location and money will kind of back and forth between two and three. But those are always the top three reasons uh, as a whole that the group's or the individuals don't work out. And again, I think you could parallel that with the general population. For sure, yeah. So in the corporate setting, um, if we have done our job, uh, then all three of those objections are very quickly overcome. And again, that's our job in this industry is to overcome objections when people come to us with a litany of excuses as right. to why they don't, can't, or won't work out. Right. So you know, with the time, location, and money theme, uh, with those 30-minute programs, with the location uh, or convenience question being answered by taking the program on site, and then the money location or the money uh, factor being overcome by the company sponsoring the program, all three of those objections are wiped off the board. So now, if you're not here and you're not working out, what's your excuse? Yeah. And I guess do companies, this, this may be an odd question, but do companies have the latitude, and maybe they can't from a legal standpoint, to, to force people to participate, and yeah. or what incentives can they give their employees? Because it sounds like they're funding this and they're paying for it, but if their employees don't take advantage of it, you know, I wonder what leverage they have as, as a company to help help encourage their employees right. to, to get fit, you know what I'm saying? Well, what's interesting, you're right, you can't make them. Now, they're, interestingly, one company that does try to do this is Japan. They actually, there are some corporations in Japan that actually force their employees to work out. Now, we can't do that here in the United sure. States. 
<laughs> regulations, but there are incentives that they can build in through their health insurance okay. uh, programs, depending on what time, type of health insurance program they have. Um, and there's also an interesting phenomenon that we found in our corporations, and that is the kind of the fraternity mentality and the uh, peer pressure, yeah. uh, uh, you know, that is built into the programming. And what happens is the our biggest advocates are these employees that are actually in the program. They become the recruiters for us. I mean, we don't have to do anything. That's why, as a personal training going into or a personal trainer going into a corporate setting, it's so efficient because if you get one client, one corporation. You can have 60, 80, 100 clients overnight yeah. you know, with the individuals. And your, uh, your advocates or you know, the uh, boot campers or the Pilates or the yoga uh, folks that are in the programs, they become your advocate and your recruiter to bring other employees into the fold. And then it becomes, like I said, that fraternity or for the women, the uh, sorority yeah. uh, bonding. And they become accountable to each other through, like we had talked about earlier, those smaller groups, the more intimate personal relations are developed, even though they may not work in the same department. Yeah. You know, they may see each other in the hallway and just kind of nod before they get to know each other in the workout. And then all of a sudden, they get to know each other and they're best buddies and they're walking down the hallway high-fiving each other, even though yeah. the only time they see each other is in the workout. Yeah, you know, so it's, there's, a very, there's a, it's a very a, personal, intimate setting. Yeah, I was yeah. going to say that it sounds like it really can have a, a big social um, positive, you know, and you get companies that spend extra money and make a lot of efforts to try to get their employees to like each other, become friends, right. be social. Cause again, it helps their productivity It Absolutely. helps them helps reduce turnover, you know, because they feel like they're part of a team. Right. And, uh, sounds like, you know, this, this is another way to do that. And I can relate yeah. back, you know, several, several jobs I had early in my career, you know, in different places, the real contrast there were in some companies, there were just a group of, of people, um, you know, in my case, some, a group of guys who would go play racquetball. And right, whenever you right. started working there, it was just, you know, if you want to be one of the guys, that's what you did. Whereas, right, you know, right. other, other positions and friends companies were, they didn't do anything like that and, and, yeah. and really didn't have the same kind of social life either. So that's exactly. really interesting parallel. Yeah. Um, and, and you mentioned a little bit about some of the incentives they might give for healthcare, and we don't mm -hmm. need to get into healthcare in any depth, but I, I think one thing we've touched on but didn't really highlight from a corporate standpoint is one of the big reasons that they they probably would sponsor this program we know about productivity and mm -hmm. again maybe less turnover you know just yeah. healthier employees but does this i'm assuming this also plays directly into their health care costs uh, it, it can absolutely now what some companies will do depending on what kind of in insurance they have is they will set up incentive programs to where uh now it may not be exactly having to participate in one of my programs that I take on site, but they have to do something in a physical capacity. It could be a walking program, a yoga program, one of our boot camps, or a uh, uh, lunch and learn series. Okay. But they have to get a series of over an eight-week or 12-week period of time. They have to get so many sessions of whatever it is checked off. And then when they can show that, they will get some kind of incentive-based program uh, through their insurance, whether it be a lower cost for their health care or uh, some of them will do Visa or MasterCard, um, uh, $50 cards for them just sure. as gifts. So, you know, they, they can build those kind of programs depending on what kind of insurance uh, okay. they, ha they have. Yeah, That's good. And every company is different. Okay. Yeah. And before we leave the specifics on corporate wellness, one thing I wanted mm -hmm. to ask too is when I think of corporate wellness, I think of corporations, I think yeah. of Fortune 500 companies, federal government, you know, huge bureaucracies that have 5,000 employees in a building. Mm -hmm. But what's sort of the range here of, and what, you know, what types of clients have you worked with as far as small and all the way up to large um, that these programs have been adopted and, and they've seen a lot of success with them? Well, over the course of my career, I have worked with companies as small as, you know, 15 to 25 employees. Okay. And then I've worked with corporations that have international offices all around the globe with yeah. you know tens of thousands of employees so I have covered the gamut in my 25 years in the industry um, but what's interesting interesting I think is a lot of trainers that are may be thinking about going into the corporate wellness industry they get intimidated because they think well I'll never get a, a client like a coca-cola or a you know one of those major companies but right. hey there are only about 17,000 worldwide corporations that have you know 
the number of employees that those kind of corporations have. Right. There are over five million small companies in the United States. That's where, you know, with a hundred or fewer employees, that's where, uh, you know, we need to focus on is going after that five million uh, number yep. and uh, work on work on them because that's where the biggest bang for your buck is going to be. Yeah, for sure. And, th- and those are probably the companies that, you know, have that need and maybe haven't even considered themselves as eligible or, you know, that, that that's yeah. something that they should be looking at. And so for right. someone to come in and educate them on the benefits um, to, to their employees and to their right. bottom line even uh, is, yeah. is very valuable. So It is, absolutely. And I know a lot of our, our listeners and viewers, <clears throat> maybe they don't work in a traditional company setting. There's, you know, there's less, there's, there's more and more people branching out doing some different things. Mm-hmm. So for someone who's self-employed, they work at home, they telecommute, they travel a lot, or they're a, you know, a stay-at-home parent. Um, you know, based on your experiences, and I know you also have a, an actual physical gym that people come and train at too, so right. you, you see both sides of this coin. Mm-hmm. You know, do these same, I guess, constraints show up? Um, and if so, people then don't have the company to pay for it. No one's bringing it to their house necessarily. Right. Um, and you know, for the location and then time is always a constraint. So right. I guess what are your, what, what's your advice for the, the others out there who maybe aren't eligible for a corporate wellness program? Well, I think as we talked about early, uh, about earlier, the parallel is pretty much identical time, location or convenience and money are usually going to be the constraints or the excuses yeah. that individuals are going to make, whether it be in the corporate setting or at home. And, um, we're doing currently a, uh, a research a pilot program with a local university uh, specific to the mindful components of uh, you know, what makes us tick and what makes us motivated or not motivated to exercise, uh, to do things that we know are good for us. Yeah. And, uh, and you know, at a certain point, we have to take personal responsibility. And a lot of the times, if we choose to use the excuse that I don't have the time or I, uh, you know, it's just not convenient or I can't afford to, uh, you know, those are nothing more than excuses that we have to become more disciplined uh, and dedicated to a process. Now, you and I both know that uh, the the best gym is the gym we walk around with every day, and that is our body. Right, right. Because, you know, body weight exercises, you can get an incredible, incredible workout with absolutely nothing. Right. And we uh, do a series of workouts called Workout Where You Are workouts okay. and it's done in hotel rooms it's done in the family rooms it's done in on the beach it's done in the mountains i mean wherever you are i can create a workout for you you yep. could create a workout for them right. because they don't need all that fancy equipment that that multi-million dollar 700,000 square foot facility has right you know so in their home uh, if they will dedicate, and again, it's it's that mindset. It's it's building those neural pathways, uh, building those habits that become a consistent part of your lifestyle, and and it's important also to find an activity. And I tell my clients this too: find an activity that you can do and will do for your life, okay. because it has to be something you halfway enjoy. Yeah, you know, if I hate doing push-ups. And I know push-ups are good for me. Uh, most people aren't going to be able to be dedicated enough to do them. But we can find something that they will be dedicated enough to do, something that they enjoy. Some people love yoga. Some people love Pilates. Some people love to run. Some people love to bike. You know, yeah. whatever it is, find it and, you know, build those neural pathways to where you're um, doing it on a regular basis. Yeah, that's those are yeah, that, that's perfect. And I know you talk about neural pathways and a lot of the things I've, I've read and other people I've spoken to, there's this window of maybe 21 to 28 days. And right. if you just do something consistently for that amount of time, it mm-hmm. literally rewires your, your those neural pathways and it, cr- exactly. and it becomes a healthy habit. So exactly. you, can, you can reprogram things if you can just get up that 30 minutes earlier and, and do an at-home workout, you know, right. four days a week. And it just becomes part of who you are that it can remain part of who you are and you'd actually have to make an effort to not do it because it, it becomes right. a healthy habit. So Right. Yeah, and, and like you said, that when you develop those neural pathways, it's almost hard not to Yeah. because you come, become so accustomed to doing it. Yep. So, well, that's yeah. excellent. Well, Greg, you've, you've shared a, a ton here. We're, we're coming up on uh, towards the end of the interview. Um, I, I don't think I have any more questions uh, about yeah. corporate wellness. There's You covered so much about it. I think it's 
it's uh, really opened my eyes too, and hopefully, hopefully, some company executives out there too, um, listening who uh, can give some thought to this and what it would mean for their companies right. and their employees if they can offer something similar. Uh, you have a, a real breadth of experience here in 25 years of personal training, uh, but I'd like to kind of give the floor over to you for a minute to talk about some ways, some resources people can get. Um, that, that have come from you. I know you've, you've authored or co-authored three books. Mm -hmm. um, you have the local presence there in Kansas City, Missouri slash Kansas right on the border. Yeah. Um, yeah. You, you've got a big milestone coming up with your, your personal gym there. So um, just yeah, just tell us a little bit about the, the books you've written and, and what you do outside of corporate wellness um, at, at your gym and, and uh, you know anything else you'd like to share. And, of course, yeah. how we can get a hold of you for, for those sure. that have uh, – desire to get some more information sure and one thing uh, anyone across the country or really around the globe um, can contact me through uh, my email my direct email is aycfit at gmail.com and we have trainers that we've worked with in nine countries 45 states six Canadian provinces so we've covered uh, the gamut uh, so if someone in Phoenix, uh, here's this interview and is interested in doing something in their corporation. Okay. Uh, they can contact me, and I've got several trainers in the Phoenix area, uh, and we can take care of uh, any corporate needs they might have. That's awesome. Yeah, what a great um, resource. That's great. Yeah, Thank you for yeah. sharing and that. So I, absolutely. And uh, as you mentioned, I've authored uh, or co-authored three books. One of them is uh, my first one was The uh, Entrepreneur's Guide to Personal Fitness Training. Uh, the second one was Lies and Myths About Corporate Wellness. Uh, and then my most recent one, which is a, a, an international bestseller from Amazon.com. I just just happened to have a copy right here <laughs> over my shoulder. you got to uh, love the called, video interview for this, right? <laughs> right uh, called Total Body Breakthroughs. And it was done with some of the top uh, fitness professionals in the world. Uh, I was fortunate to be a part of it. And um, uh, you could go on Amazon.com and order a copy of that. And that'll help put my kids through college. That's awesome. And we'll we'll <laughs> definitely link to that. And we'll link to uh, if the other books are still available on Amazon, we'll link to those. But certainly, Total Body Breakthrough. Um, I'll I'll put your email address on the website if that's okay. Sure. Um, and uh, anything else? The uh, any closing remarks or anything uh, that you like to you'd like to share with some busy couples out there who are listening and maybe starting to feel a little motivated hearing what you have to say here. Well, anyone in the Kansas City area is more than welcome to come to a we're, – we're actually, as you mentioned, getting yeah. ready to celebrate our 25th anniversary awesome. and our grand opening because we just moved to a new facility in January and uh, on April 21st, which is a Thursday evening from 5.30 to 7.30, we're going to have a, an open house with live music and good food and celebrate 25 years and a new beginning. That's, that's awesome. What's the name of your gym there locally? A Y C. Okay. Same thing. And okay. Fitness, yes. And and A Y C stands for at your convenience. Oh, perfect. Okay. Well, Greg, thanks. Uh, thanks a million for coming on and sharing so much with us. Um, you know, we'll uh, we'll definitely be in touch here. Maybe we'll have you back on at another time as as the Fit Marriage Show continues to roll forward. Very good. Thank you, Dustin. I appreciate it. Thanks. And there you have it. I hope you really enjoyed that interview with Greg Justice. Uh, truly, an expert in this field. Of, of balancing life with career and uh, and doing it all well. You know, Greg's a great example of that. Over 45,000 people trained. Really an amazing guy. If you'd like to get any more information from Greg or get in touch with him, I'll uh, go ahead and link up his contact information below. Just let him know you heard about him on the Fit Marriage Show. Uh, if you're listening to this uh, and you're not on iTunes, definitely encourage you to go ahead and sign up via iTunes. Uh, it'll Basically, send all these episodes directly to your mobile device, make it really easy for you. And if you're enjoying things uh, through through iTunes, definitely encourage you to leave us a review. Um, very easy to do, and it really helps us a lot and helps other people find the show. Uh, if you're looking for some more great information, we've got a growing library of resources at ReadySetGoBlueprints.com. That's just a, a free library we've set up where we're adding new motivational reports, training plans, audios, and it's all totally free. You just jump right in there and you can you can get access to all that all that great stuff. So hope you take advantage of that. And uh, until next time, here's wishing you a great pursuit in your fitness and your marriage. I'm Dustin Reekman, and we'll see you next time.